So in the world of trio playing, you've got bass, guitar and drums, and then any or all of those musicians will also sing to cover every bass. Um, you've got to work out which parts of your, the song are important enough to include in your own playing and which that you, you know, which ones you can kind of discard. Because um, you do need to do that. Um, if you were to reduce a Beethoven symphony onto a piano, just two hands, a maximum of ten notes at once or more with the pedal in some places, you'd have to work out which bits are important or which bits would need to be moved down an octave, up an octave, whatever it happens to be. So the same similar thing happens here. I'm going to play, uh, play that funky music. Now I'm just going to do 16 bars of it. Um, this is on the set list of many, many bands. Um, it's a good tune. Everyone knows it. You know, it's it's fine. It's good. So, but after 20 years of playing it, you've got to constantly work out how you can sort of change it up a bit or other things that you can do with it. And that's the, adv the other advantage of playing in a trio, aside from earning better money, is to just have a bit more fun with it because you don't need to rely on other people changing their parts in order to match yours. So I'm going to put the bass line down. Um, alongside, I've got Darcy here on iOS GarageBand, iOS 11. Uh, it's a very useful practice aid, this. Just setting the drums up and just playing along with it. Really, really good bit of kit. So I'm going to uh, get started. So after four. So it's just 16 bars there. So I've put a bass line down that pertains to the original. But then I also played the down in and singing and moving to the grooving. And then I did something slightly different for the. Now, don't get too busy with your part. I mean, if it was something like this. It's just not going to cut it. Yeah, play the fucking music, white boy, with somebody going. It's not going to work. So it can be taken too far where you think you feel that you have to fill every single little bit of it up with stuff. Um, a good example, actually, is that Sex Machine by James Brown. It's just a bass line, drums and a guitar line that are really sparse. And then you've just got James Brown over the top. Perfect. It doesn't need to be any busier than that. So I'm going to put the guitar part down. Now, usually at the beginning, you hear this. So I'll just find my guitar track I'm still through the bass amp there. Let's try that. Hey, so when you play that tune, Usually the guitar player would start it and everyone knows what that tune is already. Once they know what the tune is, you can kind of do other things with it because the bass line, if I was just to play the first four bars with just that guitar riff. You haven't got this part as well. And you haven't got the horns going. So those parts, they were put in on the original record because the producer saw fit to do that, to make it just gel a bit better. But we've only got our trio, so you've got to kind of work out what you're going to do. Now, the guitar part... Oh, and the bass line... They're not dissimilar. So you could just play chords or with a few little
However, I need to be a little bit more dynamic with that with the chords because it could get in the way of those vocals. Once I was a little singer. And you can put in little fills that just go either at the end of each vocal line, just answering that little phrase. So be sparse with it. Sparse doesn't always mean um, that it's missing things. In fact, very often it, it means it's including lots of things. You know, playing what's not there. You know, it's quite a concept. So I'm going to put um, that guitar line down and I'm going to be as sparse as I can but try and include things. So I've put mainly chords on there, but I also played through the dancing and singing. Unless you've worked out the backing vocal, so a drummer's going to take the bottom part, a bass player will take the middle, and the guitar player uh, will sing the top line, you could also put them in on guitar. So, so if you play the phrase at the same time as singing it, you're almost harmonising those vocals. It's kind of a very similar thing. The less gear that you can take with you to a gig, the less will go wrong, and actually the more snappy the setup can look. You know, if you've just got three people who are just really together, it can make a massive difference. So I'm going to just um, sing the line on the mic over this and just see if it works. So, um, uh, yeah, here we go. Because um, I've got a count in. Uh, I'll have to sort of try and fudge it, but. There's enough going on there that it can go underneath the vocals, but it's not so much that it gets in the way. You know, if it was... No. Chorus doesn't automatically mean louder. The verse could be this. chorus could be this. Maybe there's some slightly more complicated rhythms or maybe a chord that's held. Can be anything you like and actually the best thing to do is to never play the same thing twice. Um, you know, I've done some gigs with people who play exactly the same version twice. Well, more than, more, yeah, more than twice. Every single gig it's the same. And it's kind of a shame because there's lots and lots that you could do. Uh, if I was to undo that guitar part, so I've just got the bass and the drums, I could try something else. Why can't it be different? So there is a, a sort of 
an introduction to how to how to play in a trio. Now, the the guitar could also be uh, more simple, and the bass player could do more. But you know, it's it's always there's always that balance to strike between complexity and whether the thing sits and grooves right. You know, if you listen to Sex Machine by James Brown, that could be. In fact, we could have a go at that. The three parts here. If I just get rid of this, delete that and delete that. There we go. So we're just left with Darcy now. So I'm just going to go into drummer and um, and just make her a little bit simpler. There we go. That will do. It's not the original drum beat because actually in that tune, Sex Machine, a lot of it is to do with those drums. So... Perhaps this isn't a bet the brilliant example, but you can see from the bass part and the guitar part at least. A little bit faster. Let's try 90, 96 or something. Um. There's also the temptation in a gig to play stuff too fast, you know. A, you'd have more tunes to play in your set, and B, it just wouldn't sound as nice. Play the funky music wide bar. You know, I did a, um, a version of I Feel Good, that James Brown tune, uh, a gig at the weekend, and it was... Dum -ka. I feel good. Ka -do 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 -ka -do -do -ka -do and it just felt so good. Not just it wasn't like really, really, really on it. Um, so um, the, the James Brown one. Here we go. Not the right drum beat, I know. But if I was to put the bass part down. Now, alongside that, these two little bits. It's amazing production and and sort of skill on the part of the band members that they can make that sort of, um, they can just make something groove out of literally nothing. a nice thing to play when it's played just with the bits and bit no sort of twiddly you just don't need it it isn't on the original there's a good reason for that really there's gaps everywhere it's just wonderful playing on that original record and it's nice to be able to to sort of um, hark back to that. Of course, here it is a trio, so you don't need to reduce anything because there's, you know, there's nothing there, and that's the beauty of it. So with you, know, you can play complicated things like Bohemian Rhapsody or Video Kill the Radio Star or something like that. But you just take the parts that you need and don't bother with don't bother with the sort of um, all the frou frou and sort of worrying about replicating a particular synth sound. So for example, there's a synth that goes, don't bother with it, just leave it. It's fine. Everyone knows what it is when you sort of sing with a telephone voice. I heard you on the world is back in 52. You know, it's, it will work. And you just with the chords. I mean, it's, it's almost worth doing a few solo gigs to really fully nail what's important. 
uh, and then that rubs off on the trio. You sort of think, well, actually, if I just do this with the drums and the bass, you've kind of nailed it from there. Anyway, there's a bit about trio playing. <laughs> <laughs> 